everybody. We made it to yet another week. Happy Wednesday. Nobody is here yet, but that's cool. The show goes on, whether it is one, 100, or zero, because this is something I love to do, and I would do it regardless. So that's passion, and that's basically what I hope to share with you guys is, is the passion and just... You know a lot of the excitement that I have doing these paintings I want to share with you guys so that's my thing okay so let's see we are part three of painting Salma Hayek and let's see I think I see someone Wendy how are you good to see you how's everything Wendy we'll put you over here so I can see you okay great so we got Wendy here that's that's great, and Air Todd and Bradley, and so cool. Okay, people are trickling in. Okay, we can live with that. That's good. So today we are doing the uh, two airbrush system, and with that two airbrush system, we are. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Good to see you, my friend. And uh, with the two airbrush system, when you get towards the middle of a painting. You want to make sure you have that ability go to from the the light to the medium and then later from the medium to the light you don't want to you know wait to do uh, you know something because you don't have the right ink in your airbrush okay so thank you so much I appreciate that Wendy I thank you and so I have the light mixture and I have my my picture of Salma here on my website on my uh, on my desktop using pure ref which is a great program and I highly recommend it and let's zoom in so game plan while I was gone I basically during the week I worked on our hair for about an hour hour and a half maybe a little bit longer her hair is very complicated and with that complication you have to basically uh, be as as simple as possible getting the large shapes treating the hair as a bunch of large large shapes and then we'll get into the fine finer details so it's very important not to get overwhelmed with the hair okay so without further ado let's go ahead and uh, let's work on Salma's beautiful mouth here so let's do that and I think I'm going to have to get my glasses on for that. Yes. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we have the light mixture in my Extreme Patriot Arrow. And what we want to do is we want to start putting in some of the details in there. And there are quite a little, de little details in her teeth, or in her smile, I should say. And that's what we're going to really, we're going to concentrate on that, you know. Oh, Bradley, it's good to see you. Yeah, I'm glad you're back, my friend. How you been? Are you still doing those amazing paintings? Well, I'm sure you are. I'm going to raise the air pressure a little bit. One second rule is always in effect, guys. Always in effect. So, like in between her teeth, by the gum line, there's a corner little corners little triangles of darkness and that's sort of like her gums I guess really good to see you missed you last week my friend these little bits of tiny detail are so crucial And it seems like where the upper and lower teeth meet, 
they are little triangles and that's what we have to do so when you're doing detail in something like teeth you really got to be careful you know because uh, if you do mess that up she's gonna look like a fright okay so right now so you can see how I'm just very carefully working on her beautiful smile. Now you might even see a little bit of, of spider in here, but that's not to the naked eye. So I don't worry about it. But at the corners of her where her gum meets the in-between of her teeth, they are little tiny triangles. There we go. And then we'll just do these little lines or lines in her lips. Now the trick with any kind of lines or detail in the lips, always make sure the values are very close to one another. One second roll with this. zoom out you'll see that it's actually working and then when you go back in with the white pastel lighten them up put some dark around it hey Bill how's it going good to see you my friend then over here so the extreme Patriot area you get better detail than a custom micron for one third one fourth the price And the secret is this little pack valve. Oh, so now we're working on her bottom lip. So I'm always moving around, you know? It's always crucial to move around. <laughs> Bradley calls it. I mean, uh, Wendy calls me the lip master. That's funny. One second rule, so don't put any detail that's not there, okay? You're only painting what's there. You're not painting what's not there, okay? I'm just going to lighten up some of those lines a little bit. Just a tad. <laughs> that's funny, the no pain dentist. The no pain dentist. Andre, how's it going? Good to see you, my friend. We'll raise the air pressure just a little bit. Very light. So with the light mixture, you can do things that you can't do with other paints. Just do like really light detail like this. I'm going to come back in with the white pastel later. Uh, not today. It's in part four. We'll introduce the white pastel. And but these little intersections of teeth, that's where you're going to actually start seeing uh, things start looking pretty good. So you see how just doing that little thing really helped? When you're looking up close, it doesn't look all that hot. I'm just doing that to show you uh, 
So what do you got? Oh yeah, I have a babbling brook. What do you guys think of it? Just something a little, uh, a little peace and, and tranquility in the background. So that's cool that you guys noticed. So you see, just by doing little things like that, it really makes a difference in her her attitude, right? Gives her a little more of a of a confrontation, you know. And uh, so, actually, this little thing is not really a babbling brook. It's just a one of the functions on my Echo, and uh, you know the Amazon thing. Look at that! A little bug on my painting. <laughs> Makes you thirsty or, or have to go to the bathroom, right? That's funny. Okay, so now we can zoom out and we'll just move around. Uh, well, there's one thing I want to do. There's one tooth I didn't uh, really get in there. Let's see. There we go. So this one right here. And, you know, Remember, the pencil always does better than the airbrush when it comes to something like this. So go ahead and, and establish that with the pencil. And then you can just take care of that with the airbrush. Remember, down in the corner, there's that little triangle where the meets her gum line. There we go. So now if I erase it, it should still be there. There we go. So maybe I can just go over it a little bit more. Okay, so now when I zoom out, so far feeling good, right? Got a little detail in the bottom lip and so that's cool. Art spa, that's funny. That cracks me up. <laughs> master of tiny, master, master of tiny teeth. And let me take a little bit of water, and then we'll go back. Wow, ASMR. That's funny. ASMR painting. You know that's been done too many times. I mean, people have done that already. I was thinking, wow, that would be a good idea, but. They already, they already went down that road. And I'm just going to start reiterating some of the uh, three-dimensional qualities that are surrounding her uh, different elements of her face. So right now I'm going to uh, start the turning of the forms. So it's not just the fact that, you know, light and shade, but we have to understand what's happening with that light and shade. You know, how are things turning and why and all those other things. And that's when you start feeling the three-dimensional quality. Oh, so you don't think it's done with an airbrush. Well, that's cool. That's, that's a compliment. I appreciate that. just going to continue turning the forms here. Remember the light is coming uh, mostly from above and to the, to the right so it's going to turn slowly below and to the left so we have to get that, that feeling of turning of the forms. And if I want a lighter value I just increase the distance of my airbrush to the surface which is very important you know. So you see, I can just increase. Uh, so let's say I'm, I'm working here and I want to do a gradation as it goes 
uh, towards the uh, plane of her upper mouth goes towards the light so I want a gradation so I just increase my distance as I increase my distance that makes a big difference and so that's one way of, of getting gradations which you know let the airbrush do the hard work for you right and <laughs> Chris says he thought the uh, Chris that's funny he thought that uh, Bob Ross was a calm one that's hilarious so yeah, we got we got something going here. That's good. Nice uh, calm evening, and yeah, different camera angles I think help enhance the variation. And that's that's one of the lessons in painting portraits. You want to get variations in lights and darks, and and edges from soft to light. So variation in everything is really important. So we have a turning of the form here. So I'm just going to increase the distance as this chin, her chin moves towards the light. So if I increase the distance, then I get a nice gradation from light to dark. So you let the airbrush do the hard work for you. You don't have to do it. <laughs> Bob Ross, he was amazing. Well, someone would be proud. That would make me very happy. Have you guys seen the movie Frida? That was Sama's baby, heard that movie. That's probably my favorite art movie so far. She was amazing as Frida Kahlo. She really became Frida. And I think that's the highest compliment to any actor or actress. Uh, oh, Frida Kahlo. She's just, the movie Frida, if you haven't seen it, I recommend it. I give it four stars. Four out of four. There we go. When we come in with white pastel, you'll see we'll soften things up even more and get but right now we're just worried about turning of these forms. When I come back with the media mixture, you're going to see that things get much darker, you know, uh, in the darks. But the mid midtones really fall into place. So I'm going to come in with the media mixture. See right here. Just so right here we have. Look how fast we the mixtures work. Createx and all those other companies, the paint companies, gold and everything, great products, love your stuff. But as far as convenience, I think I have his beat. Now there's a link in the description field if you want to purchase my inks or any of the products that I use. Uh, it's to my website and you can go ahead and purchase them. I just got the Fonz and Porter in stock, which is really, really amazing. Uh, I know it was hard to find them, so I have them in stock with the 10 refill pack, which is really cool. If you want to get those really tight details we're going to do later, it's a must-have. So I definitely, in the description field, you'll see it. Uh, Willie says, Tim, you made a lot of progress last week. I'm sorry that I, I'm sorry you, I'm sorry I didn't get to talk to you, uh, but... Thanks, Willie. Always good to have you here. We miss you when you're not. Uh, so, Todd says the toilet overflows is still running. <laughs> that's pretty funny, Todd. Thank God that's not the case, right? Because, uh, hey, what's up there, Steve? Good to see you, my friend. Steve's in the house. All right. So, I'm glad that Steve's here. And Steve, are you in Columbus? Is that true, if I heard correctly? I always remember, I can see Ohio Columbus, and he would say, no, that was Columbus, Ohio. You remember that commercial for Dentine or Trident? I'm not sure what it was, but that was years ago, you know? Years when I was a kid. 
Oh, okay. So we're just darkening this value here. I switched over to the midtone. Now it's not just enough to put the value, but you make sure you have to do that gradation. Remember the gradation. I'll go back to this. You just, you know, I'm doing the dark and I want to do the gradation as it goes towards the light. I'm just going to increase my distance. And the further I get away, the, the, the airbrush actually does the work. So uh, don't paint like an artist who's using the airbrush. Paint like an airbrush artist. Uh, master of the airbrush. That's what you want to do. Uh, we can fake it, but when we really understand understand the airbrush, we really exploit or take advantage of it, its inherent qualities. So that's very important. So yeah, I'm so happy about that. We're getting that nice gradation. So let's move up here. So if we go further up, we have a little bit of a gradation. So I'm going to go back to the light mixture. And we just want this form to turn, you know, from from the cheekbone to the light. So we have to make sure that we turn that. Now also, this here is a cast shadow from her nose. And so we definitely want to ex describe that. So we have to pay attention to what's happening with her form and then describe it. Oh, in Northeast Ohio, about directly between Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Now you can get a Pirates versus the Indians. That would be cool if there was a series. You can go back and forth every day. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, Todd's going to order a few things on my site. Thank you, Todd. I appreciate it. So go ahead, guys, when you get a chance. Check out. I'm, I'm offering a lot of different stuff that has to do with this technique on my site and here is the the page here so if you get a chance just take a look and that would be cool <laughs> so who's fishing <laughs> There we go, and we're enjoying this, which is great. And also, guys, when you get a chance, hit that like button on here, or that would be cool. And you know, I have a lot of people are in the background and and don't want to comment. And that's cool, you know. Not everyone. Some people just want to learn, you know, and that's great. But if you can go ahead and subscribe, that would be wonderful. I'd appreciate that. Um, at 3,000, 3,096 subscribers right now. So I always love to see that subscriber count go up. That makes me happy. So I'm still in the, uh, right now I am in a medium mixture, we make sure. And I'm going to switch back to the light mixture. And we just want to start making these things turn here. Wow, Ohio has pretty waterfalls. I did not know that. I'm like Johnny Carson. I did not know that. But yeah, I mean, I went through Ohio. I was in Mansfield, I think. That was cool. I was dating a girl and we were moving her to New Jersey. And uh, we stopped there. We were driving from St. Louis. That was a long time ago. So. Back when I was in my early 30s. It's like Tim has a history besides airbrush? Yes, believe it or not. <laughs> Gonna do little hairs here. Just some little tiny hairs going this. I'm probably just gonna get rid of them anyway, but I just wanna get some of the directional hairs. 
it's a light mixture. And so with the white pastel, we're gonna make things much smoother. But what we're doing now is just establishing some of these values. Oh, the Iwata compressors are very good, Andre. I, I think Iwata is a fine company and I would not disparage them. I think their airbrushes are quite amazing and they they do have great compressors. They're, they're quiet, right? I would definitely get the one, Andre, with the tank. Very important. Hey, Todd, thank you so much. Todd gave me a super chat of $10. Wow, Todd, thank you. So that's very cool. So that helps. Way to go, Todd. And so Todd, Todd's cool. He's very supportive, and I really appreciate that so much. And Todd is also a Patreon. I'm planning on doing something very special for my Patreon people. You guys are so important to me. Please don't think you're not. And I'm just planning on something totally amazing for everybody uh, that are Patreons. And so definitely, definitely, and, and stuff like that really, really uh, gives me a boost, you know? Uh, you know, that I'm doing something that people are enjoying and need, you know, it's very, very nice. I mean, it's better than nice. It's invigorating. And so, hey, we have 16 people watching now. That's not bad. We're in the first half hour. So I think we're in the makings of a very, uh, how do you say, uh, a really exciting live stream today so a lot of people say to me Tim it looks done or something like that but in reality there's so much to do uh, so far to go you know I have this is my mono zero eraser and I'm gonna offer that on my website but I don't have it there now uh, so but you can we have the fonts and Porter the white pastel pencils Whenever you order anything from me, guys, remember I always throw some goodies in there for you. So you're not just getting, uh, you know, what you order. I'll make sure I throw in a gift for you because I don't think I don't think Amazon does that, but Tim does that and stuff that you need, you know. And Silent Air are way too expensive. Well, I wouldn't say they're too expensive. They're worth the price, but they're out of my price range. But I really do love their product. I was in uh, Jonathan Pantaleone's studio. I studied with him back maybe about seven years ago. And you couldn't even hear that darn thing, that, that Silent Air. I have a quiet compressor, relatively speaking. But still, it's nothing. Those silent airs are just out of this world, you know? Yeah, it is quiet as a fridge. It's so true. It really is. Okay, so game plan. Let's see. So I, um, I want to make sure that I don't neglect any area. That's so important. So there's a dark over here. And I'm going to first come in... A dark over here and I'm gonna first come in with the light mixture and I'm just gonna establish the overall shadow here and then over here we have this little hard edge of the hair right and then this is much softer then I'm gonna come back with the medium mixture also in the extreme Patriot arrow which is uh, souped up by Tim you know oh Willie has one way to go Willie that's so cool see Willie has all the best stuff so you see how I'm establishing the, the darker part but if I did the darker part, then went over with the lighter part, I would make the darker part too light. However, if I do the light part first, then go over with the dark part, 
the values are going to fall into place. I hope that makes sense. The progression of how you lay down the values are really important. And let's see. Over here we have some wispy values. And so I think I'm happy with this here. And then over here we can come back with the eraser. Let me get my glove. Don't sell your liver. You need that. You can do it with a regular compressor. <laughs> Please, Steve, we need you to do those amazing paintings. You can't do it without a liver. But you can do it with a Harbor Freight, a Harbor Freight uh, super loud compressor that's only 40 bucks. <laughs> so I'm just going to calm down. I went a little overzealous here. I'll come back and darken this up, put some little hairs here, you know. And so wherever I'm overzealous, I have to calm down. Oh, yes, that's a good one. Yeah, the California Air, air Tools. It's quiet. You can have a conversation over it, but it's no silent air, that's for sure, you know. And what did Andre say here? I'm going to check. What did you say, Andre? Let's see. Andre Andre says he got a super noisy compressor. He used it once neighbors started to leave. <laughs> That's <laughs> That is funny Andre. That was a good one. That was a good one. Silent is definitely relative, right? That's hilarious. And so right here is interesting. This part of her lip is like a blast of light. So we're just going to make sure that we uh, get ready with the eraser to come in with the white pastel. We'll put a blast of light. And then there's a blast of light over here as well. Just getting ready for the white pastel, right? That's what we want to do. And that's, <laughs> oh man, and that's a true story. <laughs> That makes it kind of less funny, but that's a true story. Oh my God. That cracks me up. Hey, Mike S, how's it going? Yeah, the uh, Harbor Freight, that will definitely cause dissension among your neighbors. The first one I got was a Husky. I think it was like $90 at Home Depot. And that should have been in a garage, you know, in a noisy neighborhood, because that thing was so loud. But then as I got older and I used it a lot, it got even louder to the point where it was, it was crazy. And it had a leak and it kept going off. Yeah, that wasn't good. Steve Johnson, good to see you. Thank you, my friend. So cool. Luis, how's it going? How are you? Panama in the house. Viva Panama. That's so cool. We have such a great international following, and I love it. I'm doing great, Mike. Thanks for asking. I appreciate it. So wonderful crowd we have today. And I'm just going to smooth it out. Sometimes you can smooth it out with the eraser and get ready for the pastel. You can do that. That's cool. And also... You know, a lot of the lights that are in the darks will be established with the pastel. What we're looking at are pretty much the relatively crude, um, crude shapes, and then we'll get a little more, uh, you know, specific down the line. Same thing with the hair. We have these crude shapes, and then we're going to get specific with her hair. So, always looking and asking myself, Tim. You know where am I possibly neglecting what area could I possibly be neglecting always ask yourself that question and always address what you for whatever reason haven't addressed or worked a lot less at you know that's very important to do oh the Terry Hill is that that's what I want to right that's a great compressor very true 
So Mike says, Tim sent me an email. Mother drew the ink away, thinking of this old med cabinet when I was cleaning my stuff. Oh, wow. Well, that's... Sorry about the ink being thrown away, my friend. And Wendy says, I'm going to check that email. Uh, Wendy says she's learning a lot about compressors, and she doesn't even know that Terry Hill did one. Okay. Willie says, has... Anyone ever had the little blue pache one? It made you deaf and it would move the floor. <laughs> That's always important. 9.05 in Panama. Okay, so you're like an hour uh, earlier than us. Cool. How's the weather in Panama today, my friend? Okay, so Salma is uh, coming along nicely and slowly. So, asking myself, where am I neglecting? I'm come back with the light mixture, and we are going to just make sure we get this shape correctly here. We don't want too much forehead, and we want to correct that over here. We can definitely come in a little bit darker. There we go. And over here now there are areas where I feel are a little too dark but I can let the other catch up right so that's important and so just reiterate some large shapes here and there and okay so here I think I'm a, I have a good value here so I'm happy there uh, but maybe it's only because I'm not dark enough. So we'll wait. That's to be determined, right? And let me see here. Okay, so let's move on to her shirt. That might be a good idea. Get a little more specific. So I'm in the white mixture, light mixture right now. And I'm just going to just start to set up some of the darks and in between is going to be blasts of light here right so that's what we're going to do and same here we're just going to set up some of the folds and it's a little lighter here and then it gets darker as it moves away so let's see what you guys are saying uh wendy is the top of the line single use silent compressor from silent air Although it's strong enough to run multiple brushes at the same time. Wow. So, oh, it's that's amazing. Silent Air. So it wasn't an Iwata product. Oh, cool. I remember, now I know, I remember seeing him, like, in an ad where he was, uh, he was, like, at an airport with a jet or something, right? That was in Airbrush Magazine. That was back in the day. So don't forget, if you ever want an airbrush like this, if you go on the link down in the description field, use the code TIMOTHYPSA, you'll see that code in the description field, and that will give you 15% off your order. So that's like a $15, over $15 in savings, which is really good. It'll bring your airbrush under $100, so you can have this airbrush for under $100. I'm going to come back in with the medium mixture in just a few moments. Tone, how's it going? How's the mural going, my friend? Wow, that's true. I hear great things about that too, Steve. That's definitely the case. Tone is in the house. I'm happy to see him. And so now what we're going to do is I have the media mixture and we're gonna just a little cast shadow under that hair start putting in some dimension I'm, notice I'm not getting into individual hairs that comes later okay look at that 19 people here so far that's a record so we have 19 people in the room I want us to hit 22. Let's see if we can hit 22 people here in the room at one time. I'm excited about today. I think I think everyone loves Salma, right? Salma's amazing. 
But yeah, I seen her in Frida. She was just amazing in Dust to Dawn. Just incredible. Just incredible. Just incredible talent, everything. And we'll just pull in some of these darks here. Now we still have the media mixture. Wait till we come in with the light mixture. That's going to be something. I mean, not the light mixture, but the dark mixture, which will probably come in later today. We'll go in with the dark mixture in her hair. So right now, I my goal is to get that turning of the forms, right? That's my goal, is to make things turn. That's my main goal. That's what your, your main goal should be when you're painting, you know? Thus the Dawn, wow, that was a good movie. Now pretty soon I'm gonna be abandoning the light mixture and coming in with the dark mixture. And so, Right now I do have the medium mixture in and I'm just gonna reiterate some of the darks in her eye here. Nothing too crazy. But as you can see, I'm just slowly building it up, you know? Slowly building up uh, her textures and the, the larger shapes and setting up for the smaller shapes and that's what we're really, really concentrating on. So yeah, now it is no more problem with the links. I have that fixed. So in the description field will be a link to all the products that I'm using, even the paper. So if you can't get a hold of the color line paper, no worries, I got you covered and I sell them pre-cut for you in the eight and a half by 11 that I use. So that's that's very cool. So, so everyone can really experience that for yourselves. little bit of the corner of the mouth there. See how those little things really get her attention, get your attention and really get her character, which which is amazing. There we go. So you see how we're able to just darken things up, put variations in her eyebrows, variation of values there. And that creates interest which interest uh, creates realism, and then interest and realism create a work of art that is memorable. So that's, that's basically the succession, you know? And let's see, Chris is not silent at all. No Chris, just not quiet as most, okay. My guess says, is it close to 58 to 60 decibels? I believe that the the one that I have and Chris has is the California Air Tool. I believe that's 50 decibels, which is pretty low in comparison to others. Just moving around with the medium mixture and let's continue. So always, you know, reassess what I'm doing and ask myself, okay, myself, uh, where do I need to pay more attention? And I could probably say down by her hand. So let's make that happen. Now her hand doesn't even look like a hand because it's, you know, it's all cropped out. That's not my fault. That's the photographer's. Uh, when you're painting, you never really want to have uh, a cut off at the hand. That's just a rule. Okay, so right here, we have this turning of the form. Now, what I want to do is I want to slim down. Uh, so if I just kept this as a solid, it would kind of make her look wider. We don't want to do that. Uh, you never want to make a woman look wider, because you know why? She'll kill you. And that's one of the things we want to make sure that we thin this out, because she, you know, it's only her hair that is wide so what we're going to do is we're going to thin out uh, putting some negative shapes here 
here and there. See that, how important that is? That's so important. Oh, cool. There we go. And so over here, we can, so we can play and do negative shapes here and there. That's okay. And you see, just by doing that, it thins down. And also, you know, we want to, we want to really capture her elegance. And whenever you're painting a woman, you want to capture their elegance. You don't want to take away from that. So that's important. Very important. So you see, now I'm just changing the composition or refining the composition a little bit. You see that? And I think that does a lot. And so, yeah, I mean, it was a little nondescript there, but as long as I stuck with it, I could say, okay, I'm getting there, right? Things are happening slowly but surely, you know? Oh, cool, yeah, so my decibels, my, my compress about 50 decibels. As it gets older, it gets louder, though. How much is the shipping? Oh, only $5, Willie, so that's, that's great. And plus I throw in some, some gifts and stuff like that. Stuff that you'll need when working on this technique. So definitely we'll take care of you. And I only charge you five bucks, you know. See, that's the thing. And, uh, and it's, it's cool because, you know, if someone purchased from my website, you, you help out the channel. And I help you guys out by throwing you guys some, some stuff, some surprises. Not necessarily expensive surprises, but stuff that you guys could use, you know? So that's cool. And let's see. Uh, Steve says if you have court in his feeds. Oh, he has had the silent air. Look at that. That is amazing. That's so cool. That's, that's so neat. Yes. Well, Mr. Leahy has been uh, carrying the torch for us for years doing these amazing airbrush paintings and everything like that. So he definitely deserves that, that silent air. We all deserve it, definitely. But, you know, over the years, uh, how long have you been, uh, Steve, how long have you been doing airbrush uh, regularly? Because uh, I'm a relatively newcomer to the airbrush world. Relatively. Oh, okay. So my guest has it under a card table. So it's good to have it covered somehow. Mine's in my closet with the door shut. It's about maybe three feet away from me. But still, with the door shut, really helped muffle the sound. Uh, which is very important. A practice book, so cool. So when you mean a practice book, we mean like practice, uh, you know, like doing uh, like dagger strokes, that sort of thing, Wendy? Okay, so right now I'm feeling pretty good. We're moving pretty fast with this painting, aren't we? And Oh, you know, I want to show you this, what I did uh, just practice today. This was about an hour and a half of practicing today. I just did this really quick portrait study, and I did all this. This was about an hour and a half. Uh, this is all done with a medium mixture, so I practiced the different mixtures and everything like that, you know. And so practice as much as you can that will make a big difference in your art uh, oh the 50 15 very cool so uh, so i are you having trouble seeing that oh no it's bright as can be just messing with you guys okay there you go everything's good just playing just playing with you guys uh, so first, wow, first airbrush in 1988. I was doing pastels during that time. So that's, uh, okay, cool. 
Cool. So I'm just going to lighten her up. There we go, Selma. All right, so let me get my reference picture down here. There we are. And so I still have the medium mixture, and I'm just going to look for some darks here, just trying to create some, some textural differences. So I'm going to actually abandon the light mixture, and I'm going to have just the medium and the dark mixture. So right now I'm going to take my light mixture and brush and blow it out. Now when you go from a lighter mixture to a dark mixture, you don't have to clean out the cup because the lighter mixture is not going to affect the darker mixture. Just spray out everything that's there. But if you're going from, let's say, a darker mixture to a light mixture, the residual in there will change your, your, your mixture dramatically. So I'm looking for the dark mixture. And here we are. We have the dark mixture, which is very cool. Let's see here. OK. So. Createx, Golden, all you guys love your love your stuff, but you can't do this. Sorry, guys. Sorry, Createx. Sorry, Golden. Sorry, Arrow Flash and all those guys. Look how fast I went from one color to the next. No mixing, no mediums. Nada, nada, nada. So, I have my dark mixture in, and let's go and let's start making some. Some nice dark variations. Doing Crayolas, that's funny. <laughs> I was I was in the medium, now I'm in the dark. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> so I'm you know, I guess I'm feeling mischievous today, I guess. So let's use our freehand shield. And we'll just crawl along the surface, perpendicular, and not parallel. That's one of my Timisms. And so I really should fix that water pipe, huh? There we go. Just as you see, as I'm darkening that area, look at what looked too dark, you know, in the face, all of a sudden lightens up and has luminous qualities, right? <laughs> wow, that's true. Holy cow. So I admire that. I was told in art school, and I went to some incredible art schools, I was very fortunate in New York City, and we were banned from using the airbrush. And I'm not kidding you, banned. It was like, not only frowned upon, it was like, you don't do it. Because we were told that airbrush was not fine art, that it was a commercial tool, all that, all that rhetoric, you know? Same thing here, we're just going to use our freehand shield to get that nice hard edge here. And we're gonna start getting some real nice dimension here coming in with the dark mixture. So you see the perpendicular and not parallel is really working. And so what I'm doing now is looking for those real larger dark areas and that's gonna go a long way. A Crayola master. <laughs> That's pretty cool. My guest says one of his buddies, Muller, told him he started doing finger paintings uh, on a wall in the crib. Wow. That's, yeah, that's, that's what I call uh, interesting art there, my guess. So you see how I'm coming in with that dark mixture and really pulling in some of that uh, that volume and interest. Let's focus that. There we go. And let's put some dark here.
Maybe we can make her a little bit lighter. There we go, Selma. Okay. Okay, so now I have the dark mixture here. Let's go ahead and let's go into her eyes with the dark mixture, shall we? Let's do that. There we go. Now you do see little spidering. That's not going to be seen by the naked eye, so don't worry about it. Be like, Tim, there's spidering. I'm not, I know. So with my pure ref software, I could make the eye just as big on my reference. How cool is that? See that? Oh, my, lost my freehand shield. Let me get that. I. Okay. My first airbrush? Well, my first airbrush was... Uh, the Badger 150 and I wasn't happy with it and then I went ahead and saw a video by Dan Daniel Powers and he was using the HPCH and that was my first airbrush and that HPCH really was amazing but the see I'm a detail artist and when I would, when I got the 150, it just didn't work for me, and so it was not a good first airbrush. I wouldn't recommend the Badger 150 as a first airbrush to anybody, but the Extreme Patriot Arrow would be a good first airbrush. The Sotar Slim, 2020 Slim, uh, any of the Air Waters are really good for first airbrushes. Like I said, I waters are a good product. I'm just a badger guy. Just like Create Text is a wonderful product. I'm just, you know, I just like doing inks, you know. So I'll never talk bad about anyone. Oh, it was a Pache. Which one? The VL there, Bradley? So let me see. Oh, Luis says his first airbrush was a Badger 200. Is a 200, is that a single? Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, my first was the Badger, but it didn't turn out for me. But when I went back to Badger, and my first Badger was the Sotar Slim 2020 after the 150, and it was just amazing. Uh, yeah, the 150 is not, 150 is strictly for someone doing t-shirts or, and it's a great airbrush for that. Someone's painting murals, that's what that's for. And it's for an experienced airbrush artist, right? It really is. Oh, the VL, very, very cool. And so, got some great participation today, guys. Thank you, I really appreciate it. So I have the dark mixture. I'm going to put in some some nice detail, uh, some variation in her eyebrows here. So now it's a little bit darker there, but remember, you don't want to go ahead and use the dark mixture for tight detail unless you already did the tight detail in the light mixture and the medium mixture, okay? Uh, going straight in with the dark mixture is a bad decision. It's always a bad decision, never a good decision. Let's move on over to her second eye. You'll see when I zoom out that although it might look messy, it's quite tight. Tight, like a tiger. Austin Powers reference. Yeah, baby. I'm going to lose some viewers with the Austin Powers reference. Let's see. Okay, we're down to 14. So that was before the Austin Powers reference. 
I think it's a dark mixture. People are afraid of the dark mixture. It's okay. Don't leave the live stream. It's just the dark mixture. We'll go back to the light. Don't worry. So we'll zoom back out and you can see Sama is looking good. There's going to be some little light variances in there, but we'll get to that sooner or later. Luis says he has the Extreme, the Chrome 100 SF, and the Apex, Apex C5. Now I'm thinking of the Olympus. If you would, oh, the Olympus, I heard that. That was the original Iwata. So that's cool. I hear good things about that, my friend. I don't know. The dark mixture, it scares people, you know? But that's okay. We're always afraid of what we don't understand. You know, like the like the dark arts, you know? So Bradley used his spray paint and automotive paint out from his Pache. I've never, never done a Pache before, you know? One of these days I got to check them out. Okay, so... Now, we're continuing, moving around, getting some really rich darks here and there, right? So let's continue that vein. There's a nice dark here, right along her, her jaw. Let's make, maybe I'll just clean the floor. <laughs> um. Okay, guys, here's a quick... A quick poll, right? A quick poll. Oh yeah, that is spooky. The dark mixture is, is like, you know, like the dark side. Um, do you guys like my, I'm going to continue my regular, you know, my regular live stream every Wednesday night because I love you guys and I really need to talk to you guys every Wednesday night. But would you guys like me to do more of those recorded videos on certain topics? Is that something that's a request or is not that important to you guys? You guys let me know. i love to hear your thoughts, you know. Digital, okay, definitely. I'm going to do more digital, that's for sure. And the Pache VL work for So Willie says yes. Okay, so you do guys like those recorded videos as well? So what I'm thinking of doing is continuing the Wednesday night live streams as always, but also making sure that I do one recorded video per week, at least, you know? You guys shouldn't see too much of my face. It wouldn't be good, you know? It just wouldn't. Uh, oh, recorded videos like the other ones, you know, like uh, on PSI and stuff like that, as well as the live streams. Oh, Willie says more of Tim cannot be a bad thing. I wish the ladies felt that way, my friend. <laughs> I think Tim is like sugar. It's great, but if you have too much of it, you're going to get sick. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe I just screwed myself. That's horrible. I just, like, I just gave myself the worst, the worst day ever. Oh, well, you are amazing, that's for sure, Todd. Thank you so much. Did you send more money? No. Let's see. Oh, no, you're good. Thank you, Todd. You are the best. Todd rules. That's all I have to say. My guest says, toxic, toxic. That's all he hears about. Sprayed aviation paint. Oh, well, there is a lot of toxicity in all this stuff, but no pain, no gain, I'd say. Uh... Let's see. Steve says he loves my work. He loves the way I work on a painting. Thank you, sir. Uh, if that's addressed to me. Uh, Lewis, it sure was beat the tar out the whole thing. <laughs> Raul, how you doing there? Good to see ya. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate that. Yeah, I wanna I wanna do it's just, you know, you have to, I have to be on the ball. I have to plan to do the recorded ones. They're not difficult, but I just got to make sure that I set up blocks of time and make sure I do it when the light's better and, you know. So you see, as I'm working now, I'm just trying to hit those, so not quite the dark accents, but the larger dark areas of value, right? So, and that's going to not only give 
uh, a sense of, of space and light and shadow, but also give more interest to the painting. If everything was all one value, it would be blah, 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 you know? And that's not good for anybody. So guess what I made today, guys? I made homemade shrimp burgers. That was a lot of fun to do. They came out really well. And I froze them, actually. I made them on Saturday, and then I froze them. Or was it Monday? No, I think it was Saturday. And frozen. They came out incredible. Uh, so I'm learning to get better. Before they weren't sticking together, it was more like a shrimp pate, and that wasn't, you know, what I was trying to get. Uh, they were just falling apart. You know, the secret is mayonnaise and bread breadcrumbs. Mayonnaise and breadcrumbs makes everything stick together. I should have used that in my marriage, but it uh, didn't work. You know, I, I knew it was just mayonnaise and breadcrumbs would have made everything, makes everything stick together. It just would have been so much easier. And you see how um, making making it dark or over here, even though that looked dark before, but look how this is giving volume. You really feel a shoulder going towards the backlighting situation. Oh, Raul says I make his week. Will you make my week, my friend? And let's see, what did I freeze? Shrimp burgers. And Aunt Todd says he sent an order. Thank you, Todd. That's so great. I'll make sure I get it out to you tomorrow with some little gifts here and there. I think you're going to really be happy. So I appreciate you very much, Todd. Thank you. I, Wendy says she doesn't think mayo and breadcrumbs work in a marriage. But it works in shrimp burgers, you know, because the shrimp burgers stuck together. <laughs> I'm in a really weird mood tonight, guys, so, you know, I apologize in advance. You know, you're going to hear some weird jokes. Uh, well, I think they're jokes, but you're going to hear some weird... <laughs> so let's just... There's a little triangle here or a diamond shape. I'm going to put that in. See, with the dark mixture, you can do some things uh, way down. Now, this is like hour seven of the painting, right? Seven or eight. So I wouldn't do this stuff early going. This is later in the game stuff, okay? So famous, favorite uh, Salma Hayek movie. What's your favorite out of all the Salma Hayek movies out there? And my guess says, uh, damage by birds hitting the plane in flight, uh-oh. Chris says, uh, I guess his father did automotive painting and would just be, oh wow, so that's pretty cool, automotive painting. I don't have uh, many painters or artists. Uh, my mom did some uh, Bob Ross paintings in the late 80s, early 90s, but no, I, I'm an anomaly in my family. You know, I'm, I'm like, where did I come from, you know? But I've been painting and drawing since I was a little boy. Real little. Wendy's grandfather was a sign painter. How cool. Wow. That's neat. So, almost went in with the dark mixture in the face. Big no-no. Big, big no-no. Don't use a dark mixture when you're doing cheeks and whatnot. You can do that with the media mixture. That's a good rule of thumb, Timmy, Timism. Except in details, don't use a dark mixture in the face, okay? You can always gradually get there with the media mixture, okay? So that would be a no-no. You'll go too dark too soon. You don't have the same amount of control with the dark mixture as you do with the light mixture. And that's just an un, you know, how do I say? It's just uh, unfortunate, but that's the way it is. Now, today when I went ahead and I played around with the media mixture, uh, you can see that uh, you don't have, I didn't have the same amount of control. I had to gain that control. 
uh, than practicing with the medium mixture. So a lot of times when you're practicing, don't just practice with the light mixture. Practice with the medium and the dark mixture too because that's going to be so important for you to gain control of this painting system, okay? So I hope that helps. And so right now we have the medium mixture in our airbrush. And since I went ahead and darkened with the, with the dark mixture, I can actually darken some of those mid-tones now. One value lighter. There we go. Wow, you wow, you were like the Toxic Avenger, Mike. Playing around with, with, that's like hazmat suit, right? The mercury. When we were kids, it's a wonder we actually made it. You know, the stuff that we did as children. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go back to uh, Mr. Dark Mixture here. And let's see. I drank out of the hose. We all did, right? So, you know, with the dark mixture, I just really want to pull out that dark, that beautiful dark right there. Perpendicular and not parallel. There are exceptions, but you do have more control when you're perpendicular and not parallel, guys, okay? Now, you see that little dark uh, trim there goes around, so let's see if we could make that happen right over here perpendicular and not parallel one second rule so you're not just putting in that dark arbitrarily you're looking before you do it okay you're looking before you do it and then you know if you have a little more control you can go ahead with your freehand airbrush skills and do some of that that's all good uh, Let's see. Oh, yes. So let me put in the uh, my website here. Now it's in the description, Bradley. And I'll go ahead and uh, put that right there. There you go, sir. And that's where all the products are. The fonts and porter, the paper, uh, the pastel pencil. Uh, what else am I selling there? Oh, the white mixture. So all those different things, you know, it, uh, right now. And I'll be expanding on that uh, shortly. Some other really cool things that you guys would need, you know. And, you know, with you guys in mind. And like a one-stop shop, you know, for everything ink flinger. Okay, let's go back here. We have our dark mixture. So as you see, we're looking for those large dark shapes. And we're going to put that in. And that's sort of going to anchor this painting, you know? Oh, happy birthday, Mike. That's so cool. Way to go. 39, right? That's a rough one. That's what I always say. 39's a rough year, you know? Uh, I don't know how I'm going to deal with 39 coming in December. It's not going to be easy. Or is that 29? I'm really not sure. Uh, the white mixture used to come with the set, Todd, but I, I wasn't able to include it because it was almost as expensive as the whole white mixture itself, you know? And uh, so in the past, it did. Oh, Wendy, you're turning 25. Well, you know, 25, you know, you're not able to have as much fun as you used to. You got to get serious, right, Wendy? <laughs> so you see, I'm just bringing that dark over here and just anchoring her hair. And now you see her hair starts to have volume, which is nice. So I love it. Uh, Mike S. says, Willie, remember the old times for Christmas? Oh, the tinsel. Yeah, that, the tinsel was my favorite. Now that's illegal, I think, right? 
I remember the cats used to always be choking, like, you know? <laughs> that was bad. I think it was bad stuff, and, you know, my mom would vacuum it up, it would get caught in the vacuum, and just start smoking. Yeah, I mean, tinsel had a lot of problems, but it did look pretty on the tree. I hear that, Wendy. Me too. That's how I feel. You know, I feel like I'm a young guy trapped in an older guy's body. I really feel age is a number, you know, uh, is just a number. I feel that way. I mean, I haven't, my body hasn't, hasn't told my mind that I'm older yet. That's okay. I'm going to continue darkening her hair a little bit. Over here, let's, let's really reiterate that right there. And then we can soften these edges as we go. So we have... Where else can we darken up a little bit here? Mike says he'll be 60 and feel like 89. Uh, well, you know, I, I hope that age 60 really makes you feel younger. That's my hope for you, sir, my prayer. And I'm just gonna continue with some of these darks here. And you notice I'm not really looking to make tight details yet. We know that's coming. But right now we're just going to try and just get a sense of the large shapes. Remember I always say when you're painting, try and squint your eyes and just see the large shapes. If you wear glasses, take your glasses off, you know. Uh, Pumpkin, you know, I make a really mean pumpkin bread, you know, so I really make a good pumpkin bread. I just want you guys to know that. I love pumpkin bread. It's not quite pumpkin bread season, but it's getting there pretty soon. So I'm excited about the fall. Make sure you don't get too wet, right? That's important. You don't want to stain the surface. Working and listening. Very cool. Very cool. Microwave food, Andre. Microwave food, that's an art in itself, right? But, you know, don't you hate when, you know, it's like really hot until you bite into it and the center is like frozen? That's the one problem I have with microwave food. That's the only thing. Since the pandemic and everything and being home most of the time, I've been baking a lot more. Not baking like baking bread or whatnot, but instead of microwaving it, putting it in the, uh, in the oven, you know? Because you know, like the pot pies come out better and whatnot like that, that's cool. So, as you can see, we're getting a good sense and uh, some of these darks right here, rather than erasing it to that, the white pastel is gonna take care of that. There's a transition tone right here. Let's make sure we do that. Oh, pot pies, those are amazing. Uh, oh, an American made V8, that would be really cool. I had a V8 350 Camaro back in the 90s. The early to mid 90s I had that car. I love that car. Muscle cars, American muscle cars, nothing beats them. Not those little Japanese little things, nope. American muscle cars are the best cars in the world.
going to try and pull some of some of the light here. Just you know, just to start it, you know, get ready for it, that sort of thing. Wait for it, that sort of thing, you know. And also there's some really nice light shapes in here that I want to capture, which is very important. And Micah says, a 1937 international pickup. Wow, that's really wild. Now, now, which, which one was that? The Camaros? Is that correct, Andre? Or just muscle cars as a whole? Well, I had a 1977, uh, it was really so cool, you know, and I really enjoyed that one. Uh, it had a V8 350 with a Holly carburetor and Raleigh rims. Oh my God, women loved it, and uh, that's all I cared about. <laughs> so let's see, oh, so Steve says, I got a tri -Marie calendar, that's, uh, several people have been recommending that, so... I am definitely intrigued now, you know? I'm interested. So guys, everyone out there, what is your guilty pleasure when it comes to, ooh, there was a bug. Oh, look at that. So Bradley says, order the ink set and the white mechanical. Thank you, Bradley. I appreciate that. Bradley, I'm sending you a little, little gift there. So a little extra. I'm gonna make sure we get that out to you tomorrow along with Todd stuff, you know, better than Amazon, you know, well, not better than them, different than Amazon. That's my only claim to fame. <laughs> you know, that's really good in business. We're different. You can always be correct, you know. <laughs> that's going to be my slogan. I'm different, you know. Uh, no one can say it's false advertising. Uh, I appreciate you too, Brad. Thank you so much. And uh, with, your, with your students, are you uh, doing remotely or are you teaching uh, in the school? Oh, this, the, the Zen Fountain. Well, the Zen Fountain is, yeah, we promised to, uh, it is the art spa. That is so correct. That is so true. So you see, I'm just trying to create some luminosity, setting up for the white pastel. You don't want to put, oh, both, which is cool. So just be careful. Don't let those kids cough on you, my friend. You know, you should have a 10-foot pole stick, you know, where you keep the kids 10 feet away. <laughs> Not to hit them, but to keep them away. You know, I want you safe, my friend. That's for sure. Uh, Mike asked, the 76 Capri Station Wagon, 145 miles per hour. Holy cow. That's pretty cool. And <laughs> Bradley said both. That's right, you know, multi-purpose stick. That's what we got to use. Just keep it moving around, guys. And remember, there's some blotchiness. Don't worry, white pastels coming in for that. But as you can see, we're slowly darkening things up. And, uh, oh, I love the Mach 1. That was amazing. As a kid, I used to see that. There was a green one by my house. Just amazing. Uh, just incredible. I love the old muscle cars. Remember the Dukes of Hazard car? Was that a, that was a Dodge, right? Dodge Charger? The Dukes of Hazard? I know. I was, uh, now was that Barbara Bach? Was that the young lady who was Daisy Duke? Uh, I remember there was a car in that show. That's all I have to say. Uh, I think it was orange. <laughs> <laughs> 57 Chevy Bel Air. Wow, those are some nice cars. And you see her hair. It's going to come together, but we're going to just go very slow with that, right? Always double check. Have, you know, it's not good enough to have like a white piece of paper when you are testing whether to see, you know, 
how your airbrush is working. So you want to have a, a scrap piece of paper that is the same as what you're working so you can see what it's going to do, whether it's the dark mixture or the light mixture. You don't want to make the mistake there because how it appears with white paper is totally different than how it appears with with the gray paper. So there's a big difference. So definitely make sure you're using the paper that you are working with currently. That's going to help out a lot, you know? Hey, what's up, Brad? Good to see you. Brad's in the house. All right. So Brad, if you can put a link to where we can vote for your painting. So Bradley is in this art contest and we have to, we want to vote for him. And you can vote every day if you get a chance. Uh, so go ahead and put that link there, my friend. That would be great. So you, you see, I'm actually doing a live stream next to a, a babbling brook, as you can hear there, Brad. So that's good. And so we got some really cool car talk going on here. We had some great talk and discussion going on about, uh, about what were we talking about? Cars and different kinds of cakes. And so that's pretty cool. Oh, Steve's gonna, oh, so cool. So Steve's ordering. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. And like I said, some goodies we get sent out to you as a gift because you're my friend. And that's cool. So, hey, Scott Ryan, always good to see you, my friend. Love your work. How's it going? So, what an honor. Good to see you there, Mr. Ryan. So great. We have a really nice live stream. A lot of great people come in. Just great emotions. I don't know if it's the artwork or you amazing people or the babbling brook. But something's going on, you know? <laughs> so Brad has an 84 Corvette. You should see that picture of that. Hey, Mr. Bill, how you doing? How's everything? Good to see ya. Bill is in the house. Well, we had Bill Kennedy, and now we have Bill Snagan. Bill, you know, he shows some pictures on Facebook. He is another one of the artists that have been carrying the torch for people like me to come along as a latecomer uh, in the 2000s. And so if you ever get a chance, check out uh, Bill Snagan on Facebook. Just amaz amazing work. I mean, he was doing, he was doing like airbrushing when I was, you know, I didn't even know airbrush existed, you know, because my art teachers wouldn't even tell me. So that's just amazing. So if I would have met someone like Steve in the 70s and Bill in the in the 70s, I don't know. I think I would have never touched other mediums. So it is a blessing because I just would have done airbrush. I do love the other mediums, pastel and all that other stuff. 1983. I was in, I was going to the High School of Art and Designs, and I was working primarily in oils at the time, oils and Conte crayon. So that's cool. Uh, it's Salma, yes, Salma Hayek. Uh, <laughs> Salma's amazing, right? Uh, Bill, Bill rocks, right? Bill rocks the house. So that's all I have to say. Uh, if you ever get a chance to see Bill Snagan's work. Oh, and Bill, you have, Bill, if you want, go ahead and type in the link to your, uh, YouTube channel, will ya? Uh, you know what? With the power of the internet, I am going to find, uh, Bill Snagan's Let's see if I can do that. Uh, Bill Snagan and YouTube. Give me a moment, guys. And I'm not going to find you there. Bill Santiago comes up, Bill. I don't know who Bill Santiago is. Uh, let's see. YouTube. There we go. 
And let's go there. And now I'm going to try... No results. I know you have a different name. Let me see what Bill's name is. Imagine Airbrush School, right? There it is. Okay. So give me one more moment. I just want you to see Bill's work. There we go. Okay, watch this. I am going to put a link to his stuff so you guys could check it out. There we go. Okay, so we got you. We got you hooked up there, Bill. And let's see. I was going to ask Tim a question, Wendy. Oh, great. What's the question? Uh, so the question is, especially since he was invested in pastel. I am actually working in pastel for 30 years. I was trained at the National Academy School of Fine Arts in it. And uh, so any question you have in pastel, I'm definitely the man. I'm a signature member of the Pastel Society of America, won about 30 international and national awards for my pastel. Airbrush came later. Airbrush came in about 2011, I started, you know. Uh, so that's cool. Um, so you wanted to paint scale models, that's pretty cool. That's neat. And Andre, definitely. Uh, you know, if you go to the Badger page on YouTube, they have a lot of really cool uh, people who are doing some great things painting the modelers, painting the models. So, you know, you know, like cars, model cars, and, uh, you know, those little army guys, all that stuff's pretty cool. Roger Dean got you interested in airbrush. Wow, that's cool. Steve, you know, my first painting I did on the back of a jean jacket was the Asia book cover. So that's interesting, right? But I did that in acrylic. And, you know, it just, for some reason, airbrush just eluded me, you know, or, or something like that. So let's see. So we are doing great so far. We are, you know, entrenched in an hour and a half and still have 19 people on here. How exciting is that? So I'm excited, and I hope you guys are excited about that. And I'm just gonna do some of these really rich darks again, because these darks are what's really going to give her hair volume. We got plenty of time for detail, right? This is only week three. Usually we have like a week six or seven, I think last time was five weeks, right? So you just never know. Every work of art that we work, every painting is just its own entity. Oh, you're going to have to convert some women to this channel. Oh, definitely. More women, the better. <laughs> oh, I am in such a weird mood tonight, Wendy. Forgive me. And... Let's see, what else is people saying? Are people saying out there? I said, what else is people saying? So next week, we're going to have a guest speaker. They're going to teach me English grammar, and that's going to be exciting. Hey, Matt, good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. How's everything? So great that you made it. Okay, great. 20 people. We have 20 people on, uh, you know, at one time here. So that we haven't done in a long time. And I want to thank Salma Hayek for that because her beauty is definitely attracting a lot of people. And definitely, we got to do more Salma Hayek. Oh, women will talk about shoes? That's okay. I love women. I love what you women talk about and all that girl stuff. And But a lot of you women talk about pretty rugged stuff too, you know. Uh, can't put women in a box, right? You guys, you guys, it's no way you, to define you. Women are the ultimate enigma, right? And you're one of them, Wendy, that's for sure. Women are an enigma wrapped in a riddle, in an enigma, in another riddle. But you know what? 
women are the spice of life. To me. Wendy has a lot of interests, but not too many. Bradley says uh, he messed up. He was he got to get up early for school. Oh, it was great talking to you, Brad. You rock. Thank you so much for purchasing from my website. And like I said, I'll get it out to you tomorrow with some goodies. And 21 people into the, into the group. We are we are approaching the record for live stream here. So the energy is really great. So who keeps <laughs> Steve keeps saying Selma? You are cracking me up. My, Max says, uh, great work. Hey, I appreciate that, Max. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so that's that's really cool. And so we got some emojis. We got a palette and a smile. Thank you, Bill. 21 people here at one time. That is really cool. You know, I'm really humble, and I'm just happy that anyone comes and watches these and you know, what an honor to have you guys and girls here. Just exciting. Very exciting. So, all good. So, we are at 11.06. So, you know, this has been a lot of fun painting Sama. We're going to come in with the white pastel pretty soon. That's going to be next week with the white pastel. Save the table. Always got to save the table. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put in some of these darks here. I still have the dark mixture. And remember, the one second rule is going to save us from doing some crazy stuff. A lot of interesting details here. And it'll all make sense. It'll all make sense in the end, they say, you know. Wendy, thank you. I think it is a fish tank. I think it's the babbling brook. I think that's what it is. <laughs> so cool. We got an emoji from Mac. Thank you so much. The Zen vibes. Yes, the art spa. I think that's really... Salma's looking awesome. How do you expect anyone to keep up to you? Uh, Salma's amazing. She's the one, you know. It's all Salma. So let's thank Salma for... An amazing live stream. She's just, well, she's Salma Hayek. And as John, uh, as Mr. Johnson says, Selma. <laughs> oh, uh, no, I can't, uh, uh, I can't say, even, I can't even say her word because then she'll come on and then the babbling brook will be, will be gone. So that would be bad, you know. So yes, I'm going to start doing uh, be recorded videos once a week. You know, I want to do Tim's Two Minute Tech Tuesdays, but it's so much pressure to get the video up on every Tuesday. But maybe I'll try it again, right? It's worth a shot, you know? She is getting the spa treatment, that's for sure. That's what I promise. So you got to get ladies here because they'll get the spa treatment, they'll get... They'll get the uh, airbrush, you know, like the airbrush uh, makeup, right? Now, that's pretty cool when I see the women do the airbrush. Have you ever tried that, Wendy, the airbrush uh, makeup? Luminaire, I think they are. Well, I think the airbrush they're using is really bad quality for Luminaire, but if you had a badger for that, wow, that would be really fantastic. Oh, so Wendy loves fishing. So what do you think of the airbrush makeup? Not face makeup, you know, like women makeup, face makeup, not like face painting or anything like that. So Wendy, I want to hear, we all want to hear, what do you think of that? Is that a good application? So Willie's going to see you in Texas. That's really cool. So I think that's great, Wendy. Uh, oh, the compressor was for the makeup. You go, Wendy. All winter, spring, and summer. <laughs> That's funny. Stephen Leahy's in the house. That's hilarious. Oh, so Steve, when does your live stream start? Steve does some incredible live streams on Facebook, and he's going to be picking up on YouTube as well. Uh, Steve, if you could put a link to your uh, YouTube site, that would be great. Could you do that for us? Also to your store. 
He sells prints of these paintings that are just so incredible. So definitely, if you can, put a link there for me, my friend. And Max says he has create text. Porn star pink is great for makeup. Oh my God, that's. <laughs> I think my my channel just became NC17. <laughs> You guys are hilarious. Got to get the cake ready. And Chris is cracking up. And all right. So we, this is good. Nice lighthearted live stream. Life is too hard to be serious, right? All the time. So this is just a great group. A lot of fun. How many times do you have this much fun on a Wednesday night at 11, 11 at night? Not too often. So this is cool. We got some cool emojis coming from Mac. And Wendy says uh, she think she wouldn't be able to wash it off. Are you true? What do you mean? Like the, uh, the Luminaire? Oh, see, that's great. I wouldn't mind doing that. I think I would be good doing makeup for women, you know? I'm going to try that. I'll use my Extreme Patriot Arrow. But I got to remember to get the dark mixture out, you know? I don't want to, you know, mess up anyone's face. Like, oh my God, that's the medium mixture. I just, I just put ink all over this lady's face. That would be bad. I would actually get, uh, get in trouble. Oh, it's 1 p.m. in Australia. So, Mac, you're in Australia? That's incredible. So great to see you from Australia, my friend. That's what an honor. We have Australia and we have Panama. I said that correctly, Panama, and uh, that's Luis, is in Panama, and uh, so we have, we usually have some people from the UK, oh, thank you so much, Willie, I, I, I think I would be a good makeup artist as far as, you know, seriously, because I know the, the anatomy and everything like that, I think I would make everyone look like Greta Garbo. Because Greta Garbo is just amazing. Or I would make everyone look like Greta Garbo or Gene Tierney. That wouldn't be too bad. I think women would love that. Oh my God, Paul McDonald. So, hey, you know, this is Paul McDonald in the house. How incredible. I didn't realize it was you, my friend. So, have you guys seen Paul McDonald's work? It is so incredible. This guy is, he's a beast. He's amazing. Uh, so... Thank you, Paul, for coming. Thank you, all you guys and girls coming. I mean, I'm so honored that you guys are here. So, Paul actually has been doing some amazing oil painting, which is crazy. Uh, guys would like that. Hey, it's all good, you know. Oh, if I made their women look like, uh, look, there's a mosquito in here. Well, he kind of went into the darkness. Uh, yeah, Paul's doing some amazing stuff with oil paints. So everyone knows him as an airbrush artist, and he's amazing. Uh, just out of this world. Uh, we have amazing, everyone's amazing here, you know? You know, with the Steve Johnson, what he does is just ridiculously great. Oh, my God. Um, Steve Leahy and Wendy does some amazing stuff, and Bradley does some great stuff. Bo Bradley's. The two Brads. That's going to be a, you know, made for TV movie about two airbrush artists. Uh, the two Brads. That would be a good movie. And one big family together. That's what we are. That's so true, you know. So I'm so, so glad that you were able to, uh, to go into oil paints. And you really have a flair with it. Has anyone seen the movie Sirens? Now that takes place in Australia. Have you seen that movie, uh, Paul McDonald? Uh, not Siren, but Sirens. Have you seen that movie? It's really good. It's from the 90s. I think it was in 92. Yes. Uh, definitely check it out. It's on Amazon Prime for free, I think. Definitely watch that movie. It takes place in Australia. It's about the artist. It's a like they call it a biopic or myopic, where it's a it's loosely based on uh, the Australian artist Norman Lindsay. 
you're from Australia. I know you know who uh, Norman Lindsay is, right? So you'll love that movie. Uh, he has amazing stuff that's underground. That's cool. That's very cool. And uh, Sam Neill, yes. And L. McPherson. And Portia, Portia, Portia De, De Rossi. She was amazing in that movie. Uh, so you're from the UK living in Australia? Is that correct? Oh, you, did you, oh, I see. Well, you know, in Australia, everyone eventually is either from Ireland or the UK, am I right? <laughs> You know, we're all there. You know, I have, I actually have a lot of family with Ancestry DNA, a large group, because I'm Irish, a large group of my ancestors and my cousins, third and fourth cousins, are in Australia. So, uh, yeah, we're all there, you know? So that's cool, very cool. So 1116, we still have 18 people here. Isn't that fantastic? I think it's fantastic. Let's go back to my medium mixture here. And we're just gonna work on her hand a little bit. Just a little bit. Like I said, her hand is basically just a shape. And we wanna continue with the one second rule. That's gonna keep us from going going crazy, right? You know? Andre says, like if you want to feel better about your work, stare at mine and automatically you feel no, that's not true. Andre, I know your work is incredible. Do uh, you have a website where you can uh, let us see your work? Because I, I we're always tough on ourselves, right? And that's important, you know? And let's see, uh, Wendy says, do you have to change accents when you go from England to the UK? <laughs> oh, Wendy likes the, uh, the UK or the Australian accent. Which ones do you like, Wendy? Now, I never thought I had an accent until I moved away from the New York area. And then everyone's like, oh my God, you sound like Rocky. And, uh, and that's, that's what happens, you know? We don't know we have an accent until we move away from where we grew up, because everyone talks like us. So I have an accent, oh my God. So I do. So, uh, so wh who does my accent sound like, uh, Paul McDonald, uh, let me hear what you have to say. Uh, so, you know, I always, it's always interesting, you know. A lot of people say, like, yo, Adrian, you know, Mick, cut me. You know, have that kind of accent, you know. Uh, or is it just that, you know, the Sopranos movie? Hey, no problem. What? Forget about it, you know. <laughs> Well, you know The Sopranos, the HBO movie, has been filmed all around my neighborhood. Oh, my movie-ish. <laughs> That's exactly... <laughs> it's so true, yes. That's hilarious. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, I went to school in New York City. I lived in my formative years in Queens and New Jersey. So that basically is my accent. And, you know, you can take the boy out of the New York area, but you can't take the New York area out of the boy. Am I right? Uh, that's funny. <laughs> you better pay up. Yo, you want me to break his legs? You want I order to break his legs? That's funny. Yo, no problem. You just need some hair gel. Boom, you're fixed. <laughs> Your hair's done. No problem. Forget about it. Do you know who I am? Do you know who you're speaking to? 
what really comes out, now Chris is from my area as well, it really comes out when we're angry, right? Uh, when we get upset, that's when, uh, you know, the New York accent really comes out. It's amazing how it really comes out when we're not thinking about it, right? Is that true, Chris? Your New York accent comes out really strong, you know? Yeah, you know, I'm in a weird mood there, you know? I don't know what it is. Uh, but yeah, in a, I'm not trying to be funny half the time. I'm just talking, you know? You know, this lockdown, I don't really get to talk to people every day. And so this is like such a treat for me, and I guess I want to really take advantage of the fact that I'm talking to so many cool people, you know? Oh, the Sopranos. Yeah, so your voice sounds like the Sopranos, Steve? That's hilarious. Yeah, I haven't heard Steve's voice. Steve, you don't do live streams, do you? Steve Johnson. Talking will be illegal soon. Wow, we're, we're all going to be in jail, I think. <laughs> we'll all be in prison. So, in retrospect, do you guys like the babbling brook? I think it's a good thing. It kind of relaxes. Uh, it kind of really creates, a, you know, for me, a sense of calmness. And I'm just worrying about painting and talking to you guys and kind of chill, you know. Netflix has this amazing doc, uh, documentary on how, oh, I love that one on the mafia in the 80s. Funny thing about that, I grew up in Queens during that time period. So it was like going back in time. I was, I just started uh, junior, I was in junior high school just before high school during that time. Really cool, you know? So that's, that's a great documentary uh, Andre's talking about. So that, that's wild. So uh, let's see, Brad says, yes, Paul, soon everything will hurt someone's feelings. Oh, yeah, it's a, it is kind of rough out there now, right, Brad? And let's see, Mike S. says he wish he could talk like Tim sometimes while flinging an airbrush around, making artwork. Uh, well, it's cool hanging out with you there, Mike, that's for sure. Uh, we have diversity, that's for sure. I hope they have airbrushes in prison. <laughs> well, we can do tattoos. They have prison art, don't they? Uh, so... So I imagine, uh, so, you know, uh, Bill Snakin's from Tom's River. He's further down, but he still has that Jersey accent. Can't get away from it, right? And my fish tank was overflowing. Me too, until I realized I don't have any fish, Steve. You know, and I'm like, okay, that's a relief, you know? But, yes. <laughs> Mac thought it was raining, you know? Uh, uh, Mr. McDonald thought it was raining. That's funny. It doesn't make you want to go to the washroom. Oh, well, it can, right? It can sort of, you know, oh, wait, you know, I'll be right back. I have to uh, go to the WC or what they call it. So many different names for the washroom. You have the laboratory. They made you say that in school. John. So what are some of the names of uh, El Baño, right, for the Spanish-speaking out there, uh, the WC? Any other names for the bathroom that you guys over in the UK and, and in Panama and different countries, different parts of the countries? Little girls' room, that's cool. The loo, yeah, that's from England, right? The loo, that's pretty cool. We're going to come in with the... Uh, the Blackbeard Wheat. That's the weirdest of all uh, of all art supplies, I'll tell you. So would you guys be interested if I sold Blackbeard Wheat on the website so you guys can get that weird thing? The Blackbeard Wheat does incredible hair. Just incredible. Let me just show you real quick uh, what the Blackbeard Ink could do. The Blackbeard Wheat and the Ink. See that? You get like really cool hair, hair textures that you normally wouldn't get. Um, let's see, we'll just put some hair texture over here. 
and just you can get like some incredible organic hair texture just like that and I love it you know it really gives it a, a nice look you know so yeah a lot of people can't find this stuff so uh, I'll tell you what if you guys order from me today whoever orders from me anything I'll throw in some I'll throw in a black a black beard wheat for you I think I have a whole bunch still left over so I'll take care of you you know so yeah they do fall apart if they get too old and too dry right that's true a bunch of wires oh that's that's true now uh, and they get bent up easily right uh, my guest says, Tim, she's looking remarkable. I can't wait to see the finish. Thank you, my guest. I appreciate that. Sam is looking great. I appreciate that, my friend. So, anyone who orders tonight or this week, I'll throw in some uh, Blackbeard wheat. And until supplies last. We'll put it that way. I'll extend it till tomorrow, definitely. And this way, and not only Blackbeard wheat, I'll give you a little piece of this uh, sandpaper. So, as you know, when I do my white pastel, I go like this, <coughs> excuse me, with the, with the uh, sandpaper, and then just go with the stump and do the white pastel. So we'll add that to you, add that for you, right? And so that's really cool. And so very, very exciting. And... Oh, that you know, YouTube does some weird things with the tra uh, with the chat, you know. So you've been having trouble with that several times, Wendy. So, uh, but everyone is saying Sama is looking great because Sama does look great. The real Sama Hayek. I can never approach how beautiful she is. Uh, nice technique, the white pastel, similar to erasing. Very true. But the great thing about the white pastel, Mr. McDonald, is that it doesn't have blue shift. And so working 30 years in pastel, I know how to manipulate it. And so it's always cool. It's Steve Johnson's favorite part. Am I right, the white pastel? So he loves that part. And, you know, his enthusiasm makes me excited about the white pastel. You know? Uh, so that's neat. And... So it could be a bug. So it was a bug. Oh, a bug in the system. I did have a bug on my painting earlier. Uh, but yeah, we had a really good live stream today. Look at how far, you know, during the whole live stream, we had at least 16 people, which is really great. Uh, oh, so, so Todd left and came back. Mike guess says he's saying good night early. I don't miss... Hey, Mike, have a great night, sir. Great to talk to you. Blue shift is the enemy of airbrushing, and that's that's why I came in with the white pastel, because because I can, because we're working with paper, and once I frame it, it's all good, you know? Uh, so, what, Mark? <laughs> that's funny. YouTube cookies love to get messy. Uh, is that chocolate chip or oatmeal raisin YouTube cookies? <laughs> Oh man, I'm cracking myself up tonight, guys. Someone's got to laugh at my jokes. It just might as well be me. Then again, I'm not, I can only see your words, guys. So I'm not sure if you guys are laughing with me or booing. And I think that's a good thing. This way I could, uh, you know, blissfully think that I'm funny. Ignorance sometimes is bliss. Uh, Wendy says she's laughing, and that's cool. You're a sweetie. Uh, Mike S. Night, Chris. Thanks all. And let's see. Thanks, everyone. Oh, you guys were fantastic. Chris and Steve and, you know, everyone. Brad and, you know, everyone was just fantastic. You know, I'm giving you the full two hours, as I always try and do. And right now we're at 11.29. In like 52 seconds and I'm still going I'm still gonna do the dark mixture over here I'm not giving up until we hit 1130 so thank you so much for one of the most successful live streams I've had in a long time hit that like button and uh, so 
Thanks, Steve. It's good to see you, my friend. Uh, and Chris and everyone. Uh, and Mike, have a great birthday, which is really fantastic. It is 1130. So that means I must bid you guys an adieu. Uh, a wonderful night. Thanks for hanging out with me. You made my week, as you always do. And we will see you, God willing, for part four 